Hello, everybody, and welcome to How Real Nonprofits Fundraise with Microsoft. Just a little bit about the tool that we're using today. We are in ReadyTalk, and you should be probably hearing your audio played through your computer speakers. Um, if you do want a call-in number, you can go ahead and um, ask for one in the chat pane, and we can go ahead and send that to you. Um, but you should be able to just listen via your computer's mic speakers. If for some reason you do lose your Internet connection at any time today, um, once you get back um, reconnected, you can rejoin the conference the same way you just joined it now. And if for some reason you just completely cannot get back into the session, you can um, go ahead and watch the recording, which we will be sending out later today, and along with the presentation materials and additional links. Um, so again, this will be How Real Nonprofits Fundraise with Microsoft. A little bit about who is on today. My name is Kyla Hunt, and I'm your facilitator. I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup Global. And with me today is Sherry Sewell from the Northwest Hope and Healing, and Paula Lucas from Americans Overseas Domestic Violence Crisis Center. And also with me today is Mike Creelman, who is also from TechSoup. And so you might see um, either my name or Meg's name in the chat box. Um, responding to any of your questions. Again, if you do have any questions, you can go ahead and type those into the chat pane, and we will either get back to you via chat or I will read any applicable questions to the presenters following their sections. If for some reason we don't get to any of your questions today, um, I will try to find either a resource to, to forward you or I will have the speakers um, answer your question and I will get that question answered to you after the presentation. We should be able to have most of the questions answered today. So a little bit about the agenda. First we're going to hear from Sherry Sewell about the Northwest Help and Healing, um, her organization. She'll talk a little bit about the organization just to give us some kind of grounding in what they do and you know what fundraising um, uh, solutions they were looking for and how some Microsoft um, products actually helped in these fundraising solutions. We'll then hear from Paula Lucas about the American Overseas Domestic Violence Crisis Center. Again, she will give a little bit of background about her organization and we'll talk about how Microsoft products have helped in their fundraising efforts. At the very end of the webinar, we're going to be hearing from Max Realman a, a little bit about the Microsoft Software Donation Program. And she's just going to give you a little bit more information in case you're interested in requesting any products through um, this program. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and give it over to Sherry to go ahead and get started. Thank you, Kyla. And I want to say thank you to all the folks at TechSoup for inviting us to be a part of this webinar. To give you a little background about Northwest Hope and Healing, um, the organization was started by Christine Smith, who is a breast cancer survivor, and she um, was diagnosed and went through treatment for breast cancer in 2000. And when she was going through treatment, she recognized that there were a lot of women around her um, going through the same thing that didn't have support, and um, they, didn't, they had unmet needs. And she, um, you know, she wanted to pay forward what she had and the help that she had received from her family and friends. And so she um, gathered all her fr family and friends together and explained what she wanted to do. And um, her family and friends helped her get the organization off the ground by contributing uh, seed money to help provide for the basic needs of women when they were going through treatment. Um, so today, our healing programs include a patient assistance fund, which is money that's set aside to pay for things that insurance doesn't cover, like food and rent and gas for the car and uh, child care. And then we also have a healing basket program, which are baskets that are distributed at the hospital when women are newly diagnosed with breast cancer. So um, back in 2004, um, 
the organization had kind of grown legs of its own. And it was clear that um, the charity was going to the next level. And that was the time when Christine decided to bring on one part-time employee. And that was myself. And, you know, we're just, we're regular people. We didn't have any nonprofit experience. But we felt that this was important to help other women. So we thought, you know what, let's figure this out. And so we incorporated and we gained our nonprofit status. And, start, you know, we were basically starting from scratch, and we needed to create a professional look without a lot of money. So research, um, through research we discovered TechSoup stock, and we utilized a Microsoft Office donation to uh, reach our goal of creating you know, a professional, legitimate-looking nonprofit organization that we could present to our donors. So a few of the Microsoft Office products we do use are um, Publisher and Word and PowerPoint, as well as Outlook for email and Excel spreadsheets. So I'll start with talking a little bit about how we've used Microsoft Publisher. Um, you know, when we started, uh, I had very little experience with um, creating um, marketing pieces and such. And we were able to use Publisher and the templates in Publisher to create postcards and flyers and um, booklets, and even newsletters. And so what you should be seeing now is a brochure, a registration form for our annual 5K Walk and Run. One of the great things about Publisher is they have templates. And so you don't have to be a graphic designer. You can go in, you can look at the templates, and you can <clears throat> excuse me, pick out one that you like the looks of, and then just kind of fill in the um, fill in the boxes. And you can also change the color scheme. So originally with our 5K, uh, our color scheme was green and pink because those are our colors, it's green and pink. Um, and then a few years later, we changed it to blue and pink. So it was really easy to go back into Publisher and just go right up to the, um, you know, the um, formatting and change the color scheme to blue and pink. So that's what I love so much about Publisher. And also, we were able to create a newsletter using the um, templates in Publisher. And again, we kind of kept the same. We kind of keep the same look, the similar templates for the different pieces that we do produce. So whether it's a brochure, a postcard, or a newsletter, um, it all kind of has a similar look. And you know, we didn't have any money to hire a graphic designer, so this was a really great solution for us was to use these templates. And here you can see our green and pink um, color scheme. The next thing I want to show with you, um, show you is a program that we put together for our annual fashion show. And again, using the templates in Publisher, we're able to create you know, a really great looking um, piece that everyone, all the guests that come to our fashion show can take home with them. And I'm just going to share with you on my desktop um, this uh, program and kind of show you some of, the, some of the features that I love most about Publisher. We can um, easily change the formatting if we want. Um, you know, you go to Page Setup, and you can um, you know, do a booklet. You can do um, full page, um, you know, custom, that kind of thing. So you can change the, the format of it really easily. You can change the color scheme by just, you know, they have all these pre-designed color schemes. And, you know, I found that, you know, you know, sometimes I think I'm smarter than a graphic designer, and I think, oh, I want these other colors, and I want to create my own custom color scheme. 
and usually it ends up looking really bad. And I end up going back to one of the already designed color schemes because they look so good, and all the colors are complementary and they work together. So um, what's great about the um, publisher is that you can easily add pages to your program. And what I usually do is, is I insert a page and I copy everything that was on the previous page when I'm inserting new pages so that all the, um, it all lines up on the page um, like it was on the previous page. So I don't have to do a lot of moving around. So that is what I really love about Publisher. So let's go back to our slideshow here if we can. Okay, here we go. So some of the tips that I have to say to use Publisher is to, you know, take advantage of those pre-designed templates. You know, they look good. They really do. And all you have to do is fill in the, fill in the um, fields or the squares or the boxes or whatever. And to, and to really to use those pre-selected color schemes because it's super easy and they always, always look good. We also use uh, Microsoft Word to create um, really great looking documents and letterhead. And that was important when we were you know, launching the organization and getting off the ground, we um, felt it was important to have a professional image. We didn't want people to think that we were a brand new nonprofit and, and things looked sloppy. So um, one of the things on what you should be seeing now is a registration form for our annual walk and run. And um, we were able to create a letterhead template in both black and, with the black and white logo as well as a color logo. And um, one of the great things about Word is you can easily go in, since we have a registration form which has time sensitive information, for instance, I'm not sure how clearly you can see, but there's an early bird um, registration. And um, so once that date has passed, you can just go into your document and you can do like a strike through, um, strike through to cross that out without deleting it and changing the, for the formatting of the whole page and that kind of thing. So it's really um, simple to use. And then I would like to show you a sample of um, our letterhead, which um, we created in Word. And um, I love that it has, you have the ability to um, in, do the header and the footer. So in the header, we put in our color logo, and then in the footer, put in you know, a description of what the organization is, as well as our contact information, our mailing address, our phone number, or our website. And in this letter, you will see um, we inserted my signature. And I love this because we all use email so much these days that um, by inserting my signature in a letter like this, I can email this receipt to someone. I don't have to spend money on a stamp. And how I did that was um, I signed my name with a nice dark black pen and scanned my signature and saved it as a um, JPEG file as a photo file. And then when I was in my document, I went to the signature line and I just put, you know, insert photo and I selected it from the folder on my computer. And then I just sized it accordingly so it actually kind of looked like um, it was my signature. It wasn't a giant signature and it wasn't too small. So it actually looks um, you know, really good. So um, let's see, some tips I have with, um, with Word. Tips would be, you know, keep it simple. Um, you know, use, temp use the templates. They have templates there. And use the headers and footers. Um, and, and save, um, you know, create and save templates. 
just like our letterhead. I, I have it saved as a template. So anytime I want to write a letter, send a receipt, I just go in and I open up that template, customize it for my needs, and then um, send it off. So it's really great. We love Word. We also use Microsoft PowerPoint to create presentations. And here is a sample of the first page of the presentation that we originally created oh, probably six, seven, eight years ago. And again, you know, we were a young organization and we wanted to look legitimate to our donors. And um, you know, it's super easy to um, select these pre-designed backgrounds, um, it's got a little bit of visual interest in it. It's not just a plain white background or a plain color. Um, it's um, super easy to change the colors. Um, so say you have an event like our fashion show where your colors might be you know, pink and blue or gray. Really easy to change colors. You can add animation. Um, you can add sound to make it a little more interesting. Um, I try to, when I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation, I try to use lots of photos and keep, um, keep the words more, more to like bullet points because people aren't really going to be reading it. They're going to be looking at pictures and kind of getting an overall impression of the organization. So some of the tips uh, with PowerPoint would be, Again, keep it simple. You know, just use um, you know, your main points. Keep it simple. Use lots of pictures. Um, use graphics. Take advantage of, of animation, slide transitions, and even add some sound um, to, to keep it interesting. Other uh, Microsoft software that we use that came um, with our program, Let's see if we can see it. Um, we create and send emails with Microsoft Outlook. We use the um, calendar and um, for year, events that happen year to year when we need to know, hey, next uh, April I have to call you know, so and so. Um, the photographer for our fashion show next April. Well, a really great thing to do is to put it in the Outlook calendar and set a reminder, and that will automatically pop up. In addition um, to, to Outlook, we also um, use Microsoft Excel um, spreadsheets um, to keep track of our donors. And it's really great to be able to merge the information from Excel into Microsoft Word and create labels. So when we want to send out um, postcards or invitations or something like that, we can easily get labels, mailing labels. We also are able in Excel to create charts for our annual report. So we can um, you know, kind of wow people. Um, there's some people that like to see charts and some people that like to see you know, the, the data, the numbers. And I find it um, really helpful to have both of those um, both of those things listed in our annual report. So you can create a pie chart, all different kinds of charts that you can create. It's really easy, and um, we just love it. So uh, bottom line, um, by utilizing that, um, the, the um, software donation program through TechSoup Stock, you know, we're able to host fundraising events, we're able to communicate effectively with our donors, and we're able to maintain a professional appearance to the public and our donors without spending a ton of money. And you know, our, our donors, they really appreciate that. They love the fact that when they, when they make a donation, they know we're not spending a ton of money on, um, you know, we're not wasting it. So it's really um, the Microsoft software has really helped our fundraising efforts. Um, they helped us create a really professional image to gain um, donors' trust and support. So 
we just love it. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Sherry. I really appreciate that. Um, so before we go to Paula's section, I did want to kind of cover a couple of questions. And if anybody has any additional questions um, for Sherry, just go ahead and type those into the chat pane. Um, so Sherry, it sounds like that you were the one who was doing a lot of the creation of the documents and publisher and things like that. Um, did you find how, – how, how steep of a learning curve did you find um, using something like Publisher was? Um, the learning curve, you know, it, it, it comes pretty fast. If you, use, um, if you use the templates, it's a lot easier when you do use templates. Let me just say that. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you select a template, you pick your color scheme, and you fill in the, fill in the uh, fields, basically. So, you know, it's just kind of trial and error. And um, you know, it, 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 the learning curve is pretty steep. It comes pretty fast. And yes, I was the one doing it, and I don't have a graphic design background. But um, you know, we just thought, you know, let's keep it simple, let's keep it clean, and um, let's utilize the, the great software that we got donated. Right, definitely. And I mean, it definitely sounds like the the usage of these have have really helped in your you know developing a professional image and and in your fundraising efforts. Do you have an estimate for about how many people you reach annually? Our database, our donor database, is um, just over four thousand. Okay, so that's I mean that's really great for for something that that seems regionally um, centered. And because are are most of those um, is most of the people in that database are they local to your area? Right, most of our donors are are local in the Pacific Northwest area. And you know, when Christine started the organization, you know, she had you know maybe a hundred or two hundred, you know, family and friends um, that were part of that. And you know, after you know, three or four years, that quickly grew to, you know, 400, 500, and then jumped to 1,000. And, um, you know, we've really, with Excel, we've been able to, you know, keep track of all those people and keep track of their donations. Um, but now, you know, after 12 years, we're up to about just over 4,000 um, supporters. Mm -hmm. And um, one question is, did you have, were there any, you know, specific kind of resources that you really utilize in um, kind of teaching yourself, you know, like how to use Excel a little bit more or, or something like that? Um, you know, I think a lot of what we learned was just trial and error, and then always, you know, there's always a little help box or, um, you know, up in the corner of the programs. So if you have a question, um, you know, you type in how do I, you know, do whatever, insert a page or whatever it might be. And um, if it's not in the glossary of the actual program, they do, it does open up another window and um, direct you to the online resources. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. And that's usually, yeah. that usually answers any of, uh, you know, if I'm trying to figure something out, um, mm -hmm. that, that's usually, I can usually find the answer. Definitely. And we are going to be um, sending some of those online resources in the follow-up messaging. Um, so everybody will have access to that. And um, we do have a question from uh, Tracy who is asking, do you have a donor database template you used, or did you custom make your Excel database? You know, like I said, we, we kind of we started from scratch, and um, from the ground up, we just kind of figured it out as we went along. So, um, we, yeah, we custom made our own to to what we needed. So, you know, you start with the donor's name and address and uh, mailing address and you know maybe phone number and email, and then um, you, you just use the columns. So, like our fashion show, you know, you'd have a column for fashion show, and then you'd have a column for 5K, and then if we have a, a wine tasting event, have a column for the wine tasting event that you you know you just kind of keep adding columns. And um, you know the hardest part is just getting started, but um, it's, it's, it really is easy. It really okay. is easy. Great. Um, so I do want to go ahead and get to Paula's section. 
Um, but thank you so much, Sherry, for, for that great information. And um, if there are any more questions um, that we have time to uh, send your way near the end of the presentation, we will do that. Thank you. All right, thanks. And Paula, you can go ahead and get to your first slide, and you can go ahead and get started. Well, good morning. Thank you all for joining us today. And I'm really excited to be able to talk about the organization and how we used Microsoft and TechSoup in our organization. Um, so our mission is we help Americans abused in foreign countries. And I founded this organization myself in 1999 after escaping uh, the Middle East with my three children and uh, realized that there was no resources for an American woman abused overseas. And it is um, a very big population uh, of Americans that live overseas. We have you know, 6.23 million plus uh, 1 million military uh, dependents. So I started this organization in the hopes of being able to reach this globally dispersed population and offer them services. And I basically was kind of like what Sherry was talking about um, with her organization, grassroots effort, no experience in nonprofit management, um, you know, no experience in any of this, but just had this passion that I really wanted to help other American women and children who had been suffering in foreign countries um, and had no money to do this at all. Zero money, zero resources, nothing at all. I just kind of dove in, um, you know, uh, baptism by fire. Um, so I'm just giving you kind of an idea of, you know, we're based in Portland, Oregon, yet we serve this global population. So both reaching out, outreach and education was a challenge for us, and also fundraising, uh, because we're, we're not like in a one local area where we would go and say, okay, we're running you know, a shelter in Portland. Would the people in Portland support this? We're trying to reach this globally dispersed population for services and for fundraising as well. Um, and there I just put up some statistics in the 10 years. You know, we run a hotline. We, we provide all these services sort of where we've been. So we've helped almost 3,000 families in 101 countries, but we've also had to raise money for this population to serve it. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about, um, one of the things when we built our website is we wanted to be able to have donations on the website, and we also wanted to be able to change content whenever we wanted to. So we wouldn't have to bother our webmaster every time we wanted to make a little change on the website. And um, because we're not technology people, we're advocates and we're, you know, we're, we're nonprofit people, we're not, um, not uh, tech people. So I'm going to share my desktop here. And I'm going to show what we did. Um, if you look at that what's new part and that kind of scrolls through, well, we had purchased um, the Visual Studio, which is um, a, product, a Microsoft product through TechSoup. And then there's a programming language called uh, Visual Basic. So what we did is we went to our webmaster and said, we want to be able to have changed dynamic content. We want to have this What's New section and be able to update that ourselves. So he created um, this for us. So we just go to our website and then type in admin. And it comes up with a username and a password. And I need to put this in here. Um, I think that's correct. OK. So now what this gives us sort of this um, desktop where we can go in ourselves. Now we put this picture ourselves. People can put any picture they want. But here you have, we can put news articles. We can put home page teasers. We can um, you know, announce our trainings. So I'm actually going to update this live right now to show you how easy this is to update and we're not technical people. So I'm going to add a new teaser. And this teaser is that we're going to be launching in Janu uh, July are miles for moms. So what we do is we're, we're asking people to donate miles that they may have um, that they're not using so that we can get American mothers and their children back to the United States to safety, or maybe they arrive in one spot in the U.S. and we need to get them to another place. So what I want to do, I'm going to go here. I'm going to start the, the start date, and I can go very easily. I'm going to go to July. 
first is my start date. My end date is going to be August 30th. This is going to be a two-month uh, promotion that we're trying to raise um, miles. Now, we have an option of no links. We can link to another web page if we want, and we can put the URL. We can link to an email, um, and we can link to another file. And we can upload that file. Right now I'm just going to put link type none because we haven't um, prepared the, the page for that yet. But what we would do is once we do prepare the page for the miles for moms, then we were just going to click URL and we would put the URL that this would go to. So right now I'm just going to put none. But here then I can just type in miles for moms. Um, and just like do you have, whoops, do you have miles? you are not using, please donate them to mothers and children in need, for example. And actually, I want to change the start date to today because um, I want to show that how quickly it goes live on the website. So I'm going to actually put today's date, and it will be on there, and I'll just take it off afterwards. So that's all we have to do. and. Um, then say, do we want to show more? So here what we would do is we could say yes, and then when people click on this, then it would go to another, more text someplace else, or we just say no. Um, and then I just say add new teaser. So now when I come to my desktop, I can see that here's the miles for moms. It gives me the start date and the end date. And then if I want to edit it or delete it, it's just really easy to edit that or delete that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is log out and just go back to my original website here. And what's new, look, it's already there. I didn't bold it, but it's that Miles for Moms is already there. So it's instant, it's instant, it's dynamic. We can make changes to the website. So this is really great when you're, you know, this donation from TechSoup and Microsoft because we're not programmers. And like I said, if we have, you know, something really quick we want to put on the website, we just go in there and put it on. And instead of sending the request to our webmaster, who may be, you know, is a volunteer for us, we don't pay him. So it might be a week or 10 days before he's able to get to this, and this way we can just um, instantly do our dynamic content immediately in the office. So I'm going to go back to um, the next slide. So the next um, challenge we had is that um, we uh, wanted to launch our global campaign to empower Americans abused abroad. And so we were trying to reach a globally dispersed community both for outreach and education, but also for fundraising because we need to get money from the people that we serve and that they're globally dispersed in 190 countries. Um, so we used, um, you know, the, the publisher enabled us to produce our materials. I'm not going to go too much into publisher because I know Sherry did quite a bit of that. But if you look at these, you can see the posters that we used. Um, we also did brochures and stickers and things like that on Publisher. Um, and we were able to um, do our materials. And to, again, make them very, very professional looking to an international audience. These posters and things were going into American embassies all over the world, American schools all over the world. So it was really our worldwide image that we were presenting, and we needed it to look professional. We didn't have thousands and thousands of dollars to hire a, a, you know, a designer and, or a marketing company, and so we did this all ourselves. It was just sort of um, you know, using publisher and saying, okay, well, you know, what are we going to do? We did the photography ourselves um, of the second, um, actually of the, uh, not, this slide, not this slide, but um, and these are other countries that we went to. We actually physically went to and presented, um, but this, um, image. We did our own photography. We did everything ourselves, and then we're able to do that um, through publisher. Now, one of the cha another challenge we really had going through uh, all these places around the world and different countries and different cities, 
is how did we how are we going to keep track of all these places we're going? And so what we did, I'm going to um, share my desktop again. I'm going to close that one. Is that we used Excel and. So what we did, this is an example of the one we did uh, where we went to London, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Copenhagen, Paris, and Geneva. And it was our part of our global campaign. So we had all of our information in one Excel spreadsheet, everything we needed to know about these trips that we were taking. So the first tab was logistics. And this was, and I did, um, I did eliminate quite a bit of information just because we had people's personal names and emails and things in there. And I, for those. But for an Amsterdam, where are we locating? Is the equipment ready? What's happening with the food? Um, you know, wh where are we staying? So things like that, we could look at um, one screen and know where we were staying and where we needed to be. Then we needed who was attending um, these information sessions because this was also information and education, but it was also an outreach for people who were paying to come to these presentations that we were giving. So here. You know, the participant's name, are they an ambassador, because we were also training people to become our global outreach ambassadors, are they having lunch, what's their email, did they pay, sort of um, what's their address, um, are they signed up for the newsletter. So all this information about the people that um, were coming to the, the information session. And then if somebody wanted to be an ambassador for us, they needed to do an application. So this was just one central area where we could find out about who you know, applied to be an ambassador, are their references okay over here, um, do they have experience in public speaking, do they have experience with domestic violence, um, was their application accepted or denied to be part of this program. Again, all on the same work, you know, workbook. U.S. Embassy contact, I eliminated that uh, just for confidentiality purposes. And then each um, and in each city we went to, we also spoke to the American Embassy. And then this was logistics for each particular site that we were presenting at. So in London, where did we present at? Okay, we presented at the American Church. This is the address. Did we have to pay? What's the capacity of the room that we're, we're going to be um, you know, presenting in? You know, who's in charge of the equipment? How are we going to get the food? You know, uh, where are we staying and where are we going to stay? How did we get there? What's our, you know, what's the airline um, information? It's all here for each city. Again, one sheet. And this was actually, uh, we had it as a shared document. So I, I did this particular trip. So as I was traveling, um, my um, person in the office that was helping me with the logistics could update this at any point in time. And because it was a shared document, I could just easily reach this and find out. Um, if there were any updates. So again, the rest of it is just for each city that, um, that we went to. So this was an excellent tool for us to have this um, Excel sheet, um, to have all the information in one, in one space. So that was really good. And that's just more, more of the cities. So the other thing uh, we use in the organization a lot, and we do use Word, we do use Publisher, we do use PowerPoint. Our PowerPoint presentation, our global campaign was a PowerPoint presentation. We do webinars to train military advocates. It's all done by PowerPoint through the webinars. So we use that extensively. Uh, we use Word for all of our correspondence. And then we use Microsoft Outlook. And um, we have a very diverse staff and a very, a very different levels of technical um, accomplishment, I guess. So all of the Microsoft products are, are really easy to use. And um, you know, for email, for Outlook, one of the great features is that we have many meetings and multiple time zones all the time. So it's setting up meetings, and those meetings automatically will you know, go to the time zone that the people are in, so we all know when we're supposed to meet, because that can get really, really complicated. We've had that multiple times before where, um, you know, we set a meeting at like, you know, 10 a.m. Pacific time, but, you know, people on the East Coast think it's, you know, 10 a.m. their time. And you know, so with the Outlook calendar, we're able to share that with all of the participants in the meetings and it will, you know, share their, show their time zone. So that's really helpful too. So we've really um, enjoyed having these um, 
TechSoup um, and Microsoft products, especially like the like the, the Visual Studio, we wouldn't have been able to afford to have that package if we hadn't have been able to get it through TechSoup or a lot of these other ones. So it's also for a, a startup profit grassroots that's you know still founder driven, still growing. Having this um, TechSoup and Microsoft partnership has been wonderful for us. So that's it. Does anybody have any questions? We have had a few questions come in, um, mainly around you know Visual Basic or Visual Studio. And um, Al was Al was wondering. So to understand, I would need to have our website designed in Visual Basic, and that would give a non-technical person like me to make changes on, uh, to the website on the fly. Is that correct? That's correct. And I don't think the entire um, website has to be done in Visual Basic. I don't think our entire website is done in that. I think it's just the, that portion of it. And I, I should have asked my tech guy this question. But I know that we'd had the website up for quite a long time before we had that feature. And um, so I, wouldn't, I don't think he went and completely reprogrammed the entire website. So I think he just was able to use that to program the, for the dynamic content. Got it. And we did have a couple of other questions um, about Visual Studio that were a little bit more technical. I'm going to go ahead and read them. And um, if you have, you know, if you know the answer, that's great. And if you don't, then um, I'll just go ahead and do some research, or um, and we'll, get, we'll definitely get the questions answered. Okay. Um, Connie was wondering, is it possible to attach film clips to Visual Basic or Visual Studio? Yes, yeah, so as I went in and I was making those changes, then what you could do is have, um, you could link it, um, or I said link to another page, and you could have that, like whatever it is on that page, and then they could just link to that film clip, and then the film clip could play. Oh, okay, great. Um, that's, that's, that's fantastic. And Lorena was wondering, do you know if Visual Studio could be used for bilingual website maintenance? I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, and I'll definitely do I some research on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I will do some research research on that, and I will um, get an answer to you, Lorena. Um, uh, hopefully this week. And Barbara was wondering, um, did you create um, the poster? I guess this poster with a Microsoft product. Yes, with Publisher. Okay, great. And um, I know that you had, you know, you've mentioned that you have a volunteer IT person um, that, that helps you out. Do you, have, do you have any suggestions for nonprofits or, or other organizations in finding a volunteer, non or a volunteer um, IT person? Uh, it's, it's very difficult actually. And, and I'm just going to be completely transparent and say, it's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Can't run away. Right. <laughs> so I guess you could marry one. That's that's one way to do it. <laughs> right, you know, exactly. Through the universities, you know, if you have mm -hmm. some, um, you know, a, 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 they, have, they have a programming um, department that they can, it could be a, a, a project for them. I know um, here in Portland um, we've gotten different interns for different things through those kinds of of programs through the universities, but it is hard to find a, a volunteer IT person. It, it I, I really is. I think that um, it's a challenge for small nonprofits uh, because they it, they are really expensive if you have to pay somebody. Definitely, definitely. And um, so, when using Excel or using Publisher or even using you know the tool kind of created for you through Visual Basic, did, and I asked this to Sherry, but did you, what, what was your perception of the learning curve for, with using any of these tools? Well, I think it was really easy. And I think Word is very simple, um, PowerPoint, I think they're all really simple. Publisher, I think, is a little bit, um, I think it's still easy, but it takes a little bit longer to just to learn the tools and to, you know, learn how to insert pictures and how to change text boxes and things. but. Still, I think it's really pretty easy, and, and um, like Sherry said, there's the templates, and they already have everything there for you, uh, so th those can be used. Um, so yeah, I think the Microsoft products are fabulous. They've, they've just, I think we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that we have done if we, if we didn't have them. 
Great. Thank you. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give it over to Meg from TechSoup to kind of talk about the donation program a little bit more. Um, but I wanted to thank you, Paula, for this really great section on, on how you're using Microsoft products for fundraising. It's really, really appreciated. Um, and then if there are any more questions after um, Meg's section, I'll go ahead and read those to you both as well. So again, thank you, Paula. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe I have the floor now. So hello everyone. Okay, so now what we're going to talk about is specifically how you as nonprofits may request Microsoft donations through TechSoup. Um, one thing we're going to take a look at is uh, the actual Microsoft donation uh, page. And this is a screenshot of what the, the start of the page looks like. And it's a little confusing if you don't know what it is specifically that you're looking for. But we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. I am going to start off with one thing, however. There has been some confusion. And as someone who takes many, many, many emails and phone calls about the Microsoft program, let me say it off right off the bat. It is not limited to one request per calendar year. You may request Microsoft as many times over the course of the year as you need, as long as you don't exceed the maximum. But we'll, go, we'll get to that in a moment. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show everyone. The, this is the actual start of the TechSoup website. You can see that, you know, ooh, get Microsoft, request any time. So, if you notice over on the right-hand side of the TechSoup webpage, there is an area that's called Find Solutions. Now, let me get rid of that. Yes. If you don't know quite what it is you're looking for, and this is not just for Microsoft. This is for any donor. You can in fact select Browse by Category. So if you want to organize and manage data, you would select that. But we are going to focus particularly on how to request certain things through Microsoft. So I'm going to go Browse by Partner. I'm going to scroll down, select Microsoft, and click on View. And this will bring up as soon as the web server allows it. Of course, I'm on the spot now, so it's making me look foolish. Come on. Good junk, good junk, good junk, good junk, good junk. <laughs> ah, dear. There it goes. Okay. So here is the Microsoft Start page. It gives you useful bits like the eligibility and restrictions guides. Most nonprofits are in fact eligible to request Microsoft. So if you find that you select what it is you're looking for and you discover for some reason you are not, uh, you might want to come back to this page and, and do the eligibility check which will ask you what kind of organization you are, what is your budget. Although I'll let you know with Microsoft, that is not an issue. Uh, Microsoft donates to budgets of all types. So, but to actually request the items you're looking for, um, you'll notice that there are some things which are a little confusing. For example, there's Microsoft PC Windows, you know, uh, Windows PC Operating System Upgrades, and then there's this other one that's called Full PC Operating Systems. Um, those are for the actual you know, Windows 7 operating systems. And then you get into things like desktop application software. This is where you will find Office. Office is one of the more popular and certainly one of the more useful software donations that we have. It's also, this also has where you find the individual applications like if you just needed the latest version of Excel, which we saw just uh, demoed earlier, then you could find it under individual applications. Also things like multi-language packs, which would be very useful for organizations that do have to deal with uh, organizations that, are, that have branches in different countries and speak different languages. But we're going uh, to poke into Office Suites. So you can see what it looks like. And this is what happens when you break it down to the actual products. You'll notice that it has the brief description, a product ID which is very useful, and I'll show you how useful in a moment, and the, a link to see more of that particular product. It'll show what the donor is, which is Microsoft. It'll show you what the platform is. You notice some of them are for Windows, 
some of them for Mac. So Office and Microsoft products are available for non-Windows PC systems. It shows you whether it's available or temporary out of stock or out of stock completely, discontinued, what have you. And it has the admin fee. Now there's one confusion about the admin fee a lot. The admin fee is to help TechSoup maintain a program. And it is a requirement from Microsoft and all of our donors that we have some minimal admin fee because they are not going to directly support us. We technically have to support ourselves. So this admin fee is per license. A license is what allows the software to actually install on a system. We'll get more on that in a minute. But just so you know, admin fee, that's the admin fee per license. So go ahead and take a look at, for example, Office Professional Plus 2010. There we go. Okay, so this is what a product page usually looks like. Again, the admin fee, the donor partner, the platform, the product ID. I'm going to Copy that for a moment, if it will let me. Come on. There we go. Um, excuse me, that. this is the captioner. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting a message that uh, they're not able to see the screen views or the presentation. Really? Yeah. That's terribly unhelpful. I don't know. I can see it, but for some reason um, Juanita Bryant mm -hmm. is saying she cannot mm -hmm. see it. Hmm. This is Kyla again. Um, so um, if you want to recommend that they either you know get out and then try to get back in because I start, I'm seeing it as okay. well and I don't and I'm, I'm getting a lot of other messages saying that other people can see it. Um, so that would be my recommendation is just kind of to try to shut it down and, and get back into the system. And if not, um, I, we are recording it, so we will be sending it um, to our registrants later today. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Oh, no worries, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry for that interruption there. Okay, so product ID, title group. Um, that is something that I would recommend that if you have questions about title groups, actually to call in to customer service because it's a lot easier to explain in the, in, with a little more time than we have right now. And format. Notice it says DVD-ROM by request. That means that on the in the checkout process, you have the option to request a copy of the software on disk. And again, the availability. So I really recommend that you know, when you are looking for particular products that you go ahead and take a look at the full product page. You will notice it has all sorts of useful information about what is included. You know, Excel is included, Outlook, PowerPoint, Publisher, all these very useful things. And it also, as you scroll down, shows that what kind of versions is available. And it will also show you related products. And I'll show you the system requirements. So if you're not if you're not 100% certain that your system can handle this particular software, this is information to know. Now, say for example that you browse around and you want to find it again. What I'm doing is I'm pasting that product ID into our search screen, clicking search, and this is the search result. So I highly recommend that if you need to present to any board, you know, we're interested in this software, grab the product IDs. It will help you find the uh, software again later on. Okay, so we're going to go back to our slides. Now I touched a little bit on how you will actually um, choose – I went too, too far. My apologies. How you will actually choose your delivery. DVD by ROM by request was on that particular one that I showed you. Some of them, however, it is DVD ROM only. Now that's actually rather rare. In some cases what you get is download only. In either event, whether it is by request or DVD only, or even when it is actually just uh, download, once you go through the the, ch the restrictions check and the checkout process, which is a fairly standard process for anybody who's familiar with requesting anything online these days. You, know, you select the items, you add them to your cart. You update the total amount. So if you want five copies, you update the total amount. I want five copies. I want my media. Okay, wonderful. It will go through the restrictions check, which again, it's just going to check to see 
if you as an organization are eligible to request a product. Microsoft is very, very open, so there should not be any issues. And again, if you run into an issue, by all means, do call us. Once you go through the process, you submit your payment information, whether it is that you are going to pay by check, which you, are eligible, which you are allowed to do, or pay by credit card immediately, you will receive two emails. The first one you are going to receive is a confirmation of your donation request. That is to confirm that we did receive your request and we are going to process it. This is going to be an email from TechSoup. The next email that you are going to receive is going to have the title, Microsoft Volume Licensing and Fulfillment and Activation for Your Donation. And again, I've gone too far. <laughs> and that's where you are going to see this information because you are going to receive an email with an awful lot of instructions. Specifically, you are going to receive information about retrieving keys and managing licenses. The licenses in question are actually sent out and released by Microsoft themselves. But what we send you, TechSoup sends you, is the information on how to access that. Now the advantage is that all of this comes with technical support from Microsoft if there is a problem. But in addition, say for example, your system crashes. You need to reload your entire office suite onto a new system because the old system is just simply gone. The licenses allow you to reinstall on a second system without needing to actually purchase it again, which is for organizations that are trying to keep their costs down, like nonprofits, is essential. Now, you'll notice that there are a few strange items in here. For example, for products with both KMS and MAK keys, don't worry about that. That is something that's going to show up on the actual Microsoft Volume Licensing site when you have access to it. But we will happily, we, will, we at TechSoup uh, Customer Service Support will happily help you through that. The upshot is that this is information you do want to know because this is the critical email that you will receive with instructions on how to access your license and retrieve it and download if necessary. But the end result is you will have full support from Microsoft. There, there's a group that's called the Volume Licensing Service Center, and that will allow you to have full access and full support. Now I noticed that there were a couple of questions that have popped up. So how many software donations are, are you allowed per year? Um, I'm going to assume that you mean specifically how many Microsoft donations are you allowed per year. I'm going to go back actually to my desktop, and hopefully everybody will be able to see it. We're going to go back to the Office Professional Plus page. This is where things get a little, little broken down. Because the way that Microsoft Donation works is you're allowed up to 10 title groups. Now a title group is a group of like, like products. All the Office products, for example, are all in one title group. You are allowed up to 50, 50 licenses per title group. So in total, you are allowed basically 500 licenses. Why is that not working? I'm sorry ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there we go. That's better. So if you notice here on the product page, it says Title Group Office Suite. And if you are not able to view the website on, uh, on any of the product pages, that information will be there for the Microsoft items. It will be right under the product ID. It will say what the title group is. So you, there are approximately 15 to 18 title groups. I unfortunately don't know them all off the top of my head. But they are broken down to like, like items. So Office is one title group. And again, on any product page, that information is to which title group that will be led. So, course of a two-year period, you are allowed up to 10 title groups, 50 licenses per title group. The one exception is server licenses, which is uh, a mess I'm not sure you want to go into right now, especially since we are running out of time. But uh, that, that's the basic. 10, 10 title groups, 50 licenses per title group. Again, any other questions, please feel free to submit them uh, after the webinar, and you can always call customer service and ask because we are happy to help you on that. 
So at this point, I think we're just about done. So I'm going to go ahead and get it back to Kyla. And if there's any other questions, we'll see what I can do. Okay, thanks, Meg. I really appreciate that. And yeah, any of the questions that we didn't get to, um, I'll make sure that we we respond um, at least within the week. Um, but I do want to thank Meg. I want to thank Sherry. I want to thank Paula for all their really great presentations. Um, we really, really appreciate them today. A little bit about who TechSoup is. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, just like so many of you out there. Um, and we do try to provide you with the technology and technology resources that you need to complete your organization's mission. And this is that same TechSoup website that Meg was showing a little bit ago. Um, but don't forget to check out our Learning Center, our blog, um, and subscribe to the newsletters over there on the right by the cup and new product donation alert. So again, I want to thank all the presenters today. I want to thank Microsoft for their great collaboration on these on this webinar series. And I want to thank um, our, Ready, our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk, for providing the donation um, that allows us to do the webinars in ReadyTalk. So again, um, thank you all uh, for your participation today. You will be receiving a follow-up message within probably the day um, with the webinar recording, the transcript from the live captioning today, as well as um, any additional materials or slides from the presentation. And again, um, if you could just take two minutes out of your time today and fill out our survey. If for some reason the survey does not pop up when you leave the webinar today, it will also be emailed to you. Um, these surveys really do help us in developing and improving our future webinar holdings. So again, thank you everybody, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you.